What's up, guys? So, I'm gonna apologize in advance for the heater noise. You're just gonna have to get over it. It's cold. Today, it's like, what, 31? Feels like 31, whatever. It's cold as shit. Uh, so, we got the heater on. You're gonna have to deal with it, sorry. Uh, most of this is gonna be time lapse anyways. But we'll go over, you know, shit that I feel like some people should know that I feel like some people don't know. So, spill a little knowledge. If y'all can use it, cool. If you already know, then tell me, I already knew that. Or, no, that's not true. You gotta do it like me, whatever. I'm just trying to help people out. If you're going to a junkyard or getting a, a, getting a pull out or anything, like, there's really simple stuff to look for. This motor is a 6.0. Uh, this will be for Chris's dually. This motor was exposed for a long period of time. There's a lot of corrosion all over the whole pulley mount system. All this stuff's all corroded. Inside the intake manifold's corroded. So I got a good feeling somehow some Whichever valve was open, we're gonna know because that hole is gonna be probably corroded in the hole. But anyways, we're gonna bust this one apart. And then if we're doing really good on time, we'll bust the 5.3 apart too. Um, so yeah, I guess let's get to it. There you go. Don't be afraid to get it down in the holes. They're already fucked. So we lifted the intake manifold off and uh God knock sensors. Yeah. She's plumb full of shit. Heads don't look so great down in there. We'll see. Get these old girls busted off. I hope they uh they hot bath good because man the top side of these look really good. We're about to find out. This one was full of sludge. This one was full of corrosion dust. Uh, yeah. and then I mean, it was that like a whole handful. Is for sure rust. That would be why we're locked up. Man, dude. Well, we gonna find out if this box usable or not. Nothing else, we can pour it over and, pour sleeve, it over it. and sleeve it and use it in your race truck. You talking about the money on that one. Bust this other one off, see what we got over here. Same story. Yep. One hole smooth, plum smooth oil. And then this just, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, these are puckered up, bud. 
So, from what you're seeing here, this is why you are careful when you buy a junkyard motor. Um, well, plus are still good. <laughs> hey, there you go. If you see corrosion and stuff on that strong enough, and then like, there's the throttle body. The throttle body looked like that. The intake manifold all inside of it was caked. Make if, sure you get it free. If you see that, yeah, you, you better not pay more than like a hundred bucks for it. Cause if it's screwed, that's all you're gonna get out of it for scrap weight. So unless it looks fairly clean, this is what this is what you get when you see them corroded motors that come out of a truck that didn't have the hood on it for a long time in a junkyard or you know you go buy this dude's stuff off a of marketplace and his shit's been sitting in a field with the hood open for more than a couple months this is what you get so We'll continue taking this one down to what we can take it down to and take it up to work, see what see what old McDougal says. We still gotta shoot for it anyways, cause six O's are really hard to get right now. Like we're even having a problem getting cores at work. Um so we want a six O, we're gonna have to work for it. So we'll take this one up to work. Clean it up a little bit and see if the cylinder walls aren't pitted too bad and we can bore it over hopefully less than 30, we'll be in good shape. Let's get it busted the rest of the way apart that we can. Flip the pan over. I don't think we're getting a converter off of this one. Maybe. We'll have to flip it over and get the pan off and see if we can get the uh, rods and pistons loose from the crank if we can and the bottom end's not completely rusted shut like all the main bearings then we'll be able to turn it get the converter and stuff off so see what we can do all right so we got the pan off pan's got a little bit of, you know, the bullshit sludge that you could expect when oil mixes with water. And, I mean, we can't see what's in the bottom bottom because there's so much sludge, but we for sure have two pistons that got very hot. They're bubbled and collapsed and damn near halfway melted. So, um, we're still in a sticky spot. We look down in the cylinder holes from this side and they don't look terrible. It's not like any of that sediment really made it down here. So what we're going to try is uh, Chris has been fighting, unbolting the main caps and then also the uh, some of the rod caps. We're going to be in a poopy situation on some of them will be hard to get to, but we'll figure it out. But we're going to try to yank the main caps. And then, uh, it's going to be a tough one, guys, but we'll see. We're going to try to pull the main caps and then try to uh, see if we can pull the rod caps and start hammering pistons out from the bottom side and hammer them out the top. If we can get lucky, it'll work out. We'll see. Well, boys, I think we're going to call it a day. Kind of ran out of time i have some stuff to do this evening so we're not going to get to mine tonight but i think my new plan is i'm going to leave this motor alone for now because i know it runs and i drove it here and i'm just going to get the other project i bought that i haven't revealed yet or brought home yet to reveal but it has a potentially bad motor in it. So I want, if it's a bad motor, it's got to get worked on regardless. So my logic is I'm not going to take the one that I know works apart to hop it up when 
I could take one that's going to have to get worked on, and while we're working on it anyways, fix it and leave this one alone. So we'll see on that one. As for this one, we're, we're in a pickle. Um, I'm going to ask the guys at work what they think. We're basically... We're down to what well, that one knocked all the way out. Yeah, we got three, three piston and rod combos that are seized, and like we beat the snot out of them trying to push them out, they won't roll. So like this one's loose, but this one, this one, and that one are, they're in there good. This one moved a little bit and then stopped. Like it moved. Just enough to slide the bearing out of it and then it stopped. So, um, we could pull a balancer, but we don't have the balance puller. We uh, rented it, and I don't feel like going and renting it just to pull the balancer off because I don't think it's going to solve our problem today. So, to me, right now, it's not worth it. And then we're boned on getting the torque converter off because we've tried getting a wrench on these other we've got three of the torque converter bolts off but the other three we can't quite get to and our cranks locked up so we can't rotate the motor to get to the other torque converter bolt so because what i would love to do is have the converter off and get the flex plate off take the rear cover off take the front cover off and just lift the crank out of it because we got all the main caps off. So if we did that, then we could get on both ends of the crank and pull it out. And then it'd just be the pistons rods sitting in there. But I'm going to hope that the guys at work have a little solution for this. Uh, we might be fucked. I don't know yet, but we're going to shoot for the moon because six O's are really hard to come by. And we basically, we don't have any money in this one. So if we already don't have any money in it, we might as well potentially waste, you know, say a hundred bucks between digging into it and doing a little bit of labor. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's trash. Then, you know, it's like we paid a hundred for the motor and then can't do anything with it. So to me, it's still worth it. We're gonna see what we can do. The heads, uh, we've got a really awesome head guy here in town, Billy Dixon, that did the heads for the Low Country. We're gonna see if he can work some magic on these. I think. DNS. Yep, Billy Dixon at DNS Cylinder Head. I think he'll have something for us. He works some magic, so we'll we'll see. I think they're 317s, if I remember right. Not super yep. desired. 317. They'll be all right for what we're doing. If they're terrible, we might core out. We've got some core 243s at work. Yeah. So we'll see how bad these are. If they clean up, I'd still pay Billy the uh, 250 or 300, whatever it is, to clean them up, and then we can sell them. Even if we weren't going to use them, we can still only have 250 or 300 in the heads and sell them for 400 bucks. As used heads, get our money back out of them, and then make a little bit of a little bit of something. But that's going to be it, guys. Um, maybe this is a a little bit of a eye opening for some people who are thinking about getting junkyard motors and haven't ever messed with it yet. Um, here you go. This is typically when you see a motor that's really sludged over and has had a bunch of leaks, usually those are okay because if it leaks oil, it has oil in it. Does that make sense? If it's not leaking anymore, it's out of oil and or shit's burnt up. Plug and about a gallon and a half of water comes out. You probably you probably got a problem. Yeah. So what I'm gonna say, I'm not super educated. I'm sure the guys at work will put together a better hypothesis, but my idea is because 
two of the pistons. That's funny that there's three stuck because there's two of them that are like just pitted and all warped and like mushed on top. So we're going to say that it got hot. It either got really lean and just torched a head gasket and piston or they overheated it, ran out of water or something. But I really think a head gasket failed and that's what allowed stuff to start getting into the combustion chamber. And then it just sat for who knows, maybe two years, just sat with no hood on the truck. So the upper water pump uh, neck, this one right here was wide open, didn't have nothing on it. So anything could go down in there. So that filled the block water holes with junk. And then if the head gasket was pooped, every time it rained, it would wash that dirt through the head gasket into the combustion chamber. That's my theory. I don't know if that's how it worked, but I figure if it was setting for two years like that, that's what happened. Cause there's just shit just, just caked in here. One of those, no, one cylinder on each side was just packed full of this like brownish tan dirt. And it was just packed like somebody just crammed as much as they could down in the hole and just sealed it up. I don't, I don't know how that much dirt got in it, but that's it for this one. We're getting started. We're making a little progress. Waiting for those stimmies to come through, you know what I'm saying? So we can spend a little on this one. And then I got to try to get the other project going pretty quick. I'm really excited for it. So I want to try to get it popping quick. We'll see what happens. But other than that, thank you guys that have been buying merch. Uh, orders are really slowing down, but I haven't came out with anything new. And I don't really have any like deals going, so I don't blame y'all. I do, for those of y'all that are interested uh, and want to show some support, help us out. Um, I do have beanies still. I have OBS tees. I have like four or five of those left still in a couple sizes. Plenty of stickers, plenty of lanyards, air fresheners. And yeah, so if y'all want to show some support, head to maddiexbills.com. Link's in the description. And other than that, Peace out, be human, and we'll see you later.